In this video, we're going to be thinking about the synthesis of ATP, which is one of our most important energy carrier molecules within the cell. There's another video about ATP if you want to learn about the chemistry of ATP and how it's used. But in that video, um, we uh, came up with the following scheme. So we have ATP, which is a cellular energy carrier, which if you hydrolyze the bond in ATP to give it a DP, so we go from a triphosphate with three phosphates to diphosphate, two phosphates, um, and releasing a phosphate, we know that that reaction is very biologically, is thermodynamically favourable. Which means that it releases energy. Uh, so it releases quite a bit of energy, uh, minus 31 kilojoules per mole. And that is energy that can be used to go and power biological processes. Okay, um, and there's examples of that in the cytoskeleton, in transport processes, uh, all sorts of other stuff. So my, my other ATP video is all about this side, the favourability. But this video is about making ATP, because if, if consuming ATP is favourable, that means that going in the other direction must be unfavourable. I.e. you need energy input. If you're going to make some ATP, you need to get some energy from somewhere else because it's an unfavourable reaction. So uh, the cell has quite a complicated way of doing this, but it is able to make ATP. And it does this through the principle of coupling reactions. So um, I'll give you a brief reminder of that. So coupled reactions work like this. So if we have everything that is going, if the arrow is pointing up on the page, that's an unfavourable process. And if the arrow is pointing down, then that's going to be favourable. Okay. So let's imagine we've got um, two reactions that are happening or that we want to happen inside the cell. So let's just say we've got a reaction uh that's a to b okay that's a favorable reaction it's going down the page so that um in the right conditions should be able to happen thermodynamically but let's imagine that there's another reaction that we need to happen in the cell but it's in the other direction so c going to d is unfavorable if it's just um on its own so if we have them as separate reactions a to B will be fine, but C to D won't be allowed to happen. But what the cell is very good at, and basically the whole of cellular metabolism relies on, is the fact that you can have the reactions not happening separately, but happening simultaneously as a coupled reaction. So in this case, we'd have A goes to B, so it's exactly the same thing, but this time um, it is synchronised with that C to D reaction. So you might have uh, an enzyme that is catalyzing both things together. Um, and that means that the energy of, that's released from A going to B is powering C going to D. So in a coupled reaction, both processes are able to happen. So separately, C to D wouldn't work, but if you couple it together, use the energy from A to B to power C to D, then you can have a biologically important process happening. So ATP synthesis is all about these coupled reactions, but it gets a little bit complicated because uh, there's quite a few proteins uh, involved. So I'm going to build this up slowly but surely. Okay, so here's um, an ATP synthesis is a membrane associated process. So I'm going to draw out a membrane. Okay, 
Um, there are a couple of different membranes that this happens at. So we'll start it with the generic and then we'll fill in which membranes we're talking about. Okay. So to make ATP, we need uh, an enzyme to synthesis the uh, production of ATP. Uh, and the enzyme that does this is quite a complicated looking enzyme. It's got multiple different subunits in it. So it's got, looks a bit like this. So it's a big complex of proteins, sit, some of which sit in the membrane and some of which sit outside the membrane. And that's referred to as an F-type ATPase or sometimes just ATP synthase. So this is the enzyme that makes the majority of cellular ATP. So we know that the reaction is ADP plus phosphate goes to make ATP. So that happens on this kind of head group that's sticking out of the membrane. But this is an unfavourable process. We know that we're going to need to get some energy from somewhere in order to power the synthesis of the ATP. So the question is, where does that energy come from? Well, the energy in this case comes from a proton gradient. So on one side of the membrane, we have quite a high concentration of protons, of H+. Remember, square brackets is concentration. And on this side of the membrane, we have quite a low concentration of protons. Okay, So we've got uh, a proton gradient. Uh, which is sometimes referred to as the proton motive force. And that is a source of energy. Anytime we go from a high concentration to a low concentration, that is favourable. So that's releasing energy. So we're going from high concentration to low concentration. So what happens is we have protons starting on this side of the membrane that actually go through our ATP synthase. They're going from a high concentration to a low concentration, so that's releasing energy. And that allows this complex to make ATP. And it does through quite a complicated reaction mechanism. And actually the base of this enzyme here rotates around. So as the protons go through, that forces this uh, base unit to spin, and then the interactions of the spinning group with this head group is where we make the ATP. Okay. So that's the kind of protein cartoon version of it. Um, but if we think about um, this in terms of the coupling scheme, so we had uh, ADP plus phosphate, that was unfavourable. So it's going up the page, but we've coupled the energy associated with going from a high proton gradient, or high protons, to low concentration. We've coupled those two things together, so we've made some ATP. Okay, so there's uh, a coupling reaction. So that's great, we've made some ATP. But of course the question now is, well, where did the energy for this proton gradient come from? We need some energy that can't just happen spontaneously. Um, we need to have got that energy from somewhere. So how did we manage to end up with this unequal uh, distribution of protons? So elsewhere in the membrane, there are a series of proteins that are able to pump protons across the membrane to generate this high proton gradient. So that's where the protons have come from, but of course this proton pumping well that's going from low to high, so that must be unfavourable. So we're going to need another source of energy to power these proton pumps. That's an active process that requires energy from somewhere else. So where are we going to get the energy from this time? 
Well, these proton pumps are part of what we call an electron transport system or an electron transport chain. And what happens in an electron transport chain? I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of all the little bits of biochemistry because it gets really quite complicated. What I want you to focus on is the sort of overall design of the system. What we have in an electron transport chain is we have um, a molecule, uh, so let's just call it X for the moment, that is an electron donor. So X is able to give up some electrons um, and it gives it to the electron transport chain. These electrons then sort of move through the electron transport chain through a series of different um, carriers. And each time those electrons move, they're releasing energy. And we can use the energy from the movement of those electrons to power the proton. So eventually the electrons uh, will go um, and be accepted by um, a molecule called, uh, well, let's just call it Y for the moment. Um, so we have an electron donor, uh, which is X, and then we have an electron acceptor is Y. And the movement of these electrons from the donor to the acceptor releases energy. So we can now have the next stage of our coupling reaction. So to go from an electron donor to an electron acceptor releases energy. And that energy is used to power the movement of protons. So again, we've got coupling happening. So this is all a biochemical process. This is sometimes referred to as chemiosmosis. This is what's going on in the electron transport chain. So it's, it's moving the protons uh, as a result of some chemical reactions. So the next question is, well, what is this electron donor and where does it come from? Um, so we now, if we now think about um, this in terms of a process that you're familiar with, well, this is the, actually the end bit of the process of respiration. Um, so the electron donor in this case would be a molecule called NADH, uh, is our electron donor. Um, and that is able to give up its electrons to become NAD+. Plus, and the electrons go in there. And that releases a huge amount of energy. So uh, NADH to NAD plus, plus an electron releases uh, 206 kilojoules per mole of energy. That's a huge amount of energy. Okay. So our NADH is our electron donor, it gets converted to NAD and it gives the electrons to this electron transport chain and our ultimate electron acceptor is actually oxygen, um, which is why you need oxygen respiration to generate water at the end of it. Okay. So where does the NADH come from? It's going to have taken uh, energy to make that NADH. Where does that energy come from? Well, this is respiration that we're talking about. So ultimately, the energy for uh, making the NADH is coming from glucose. So glucose is our ultimate source of energy. So this is the food that we're eating. And the, there's a whole series of biochemical steps that turns glucose into CO2 through other stages of respiration, those reactions release energy that are able to make NADH, the electron donor. So that's another coupling stage in our scheme. NADH 
is then able to power the movement of protons when it gets converted to NAD+. So we've got a coupling reaction of NADH being used to pump the protons. And then we've got the energy of the protons is able to power the movement at uh, the synthesis of ATP. And we know that that ATP is then able to go and power other biological processes. And again, that's another coupling stage. So cellular metabolism is all about this coupling process. We use the energy from one reaction to power another, and then when that becomes favourable, that powers the next one, powers the next one, powers the next one. So respiration is effectively lots of lots of little steps, each of which is a coupling reaction that allows us to ultimately get the energy from glucose to power biological processes. It should be said, this is the respiratory electron transport chain. So this is happening um, in the uh, inner uh, mitochondrial membrane. Uh, so this would be the matrix of the mitochondria, uh, and this would be the intermembrane space. Basically the same, exactly the same sorts of things happen in uh, the photosynthetic system. So photosynthesis also makes ATP uh, through the light dependent stages. And it's a very similar organisation of an electron transport chain, proton pumping and an F-type ATPase.